What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out Palana Productions' latest video, WWE Hot Takes Number Nine. The reason why I want to check this particular video out because the thumbnail of his video has Biggie sucks. So I want to see his hot takes and uh, where does he, you know, feel Biggie lies? Unless it's clickbait and Big, he's not gonna talk about Biggie, but I'm pretty sure he will mention him. Because uh, me personally, I don't think he sucks as the WWE champion. Um, I'm liking his run so far, even though he hasn't really done too much. I just really want to see how they continue to book him moving forward. So let's see these WWE hot takes, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Uh, road to 60K and um, yeah, man, let's let's get right into this bad boy. And welcome back to another episode of my hot takes. I'm actually thinking that I might do two separate hot takes, one for AEW and one for the WWE because I honestly don't like mixing them together. I don't know why, but I feel like having them separate is probably the better idea. But anyways, this is going to be still called the WWE hot takes, even though there's going to be some AEW in here because I still haven't, you know, decided what I wanted to do. But we're going to get to the first hot take, which is the thumbnail of the video. And you guys are probably saying that I'm a biggie hater, but no. No, that is not the case whatsoever but i did see a lot of people saying that biggie sucks you can't take him seriously he's been a bad champion he's been underwhelmed but let me show you guys i don't know right here this guy i don't know said i literally can't take biggie serious i don't know why and then you have jamichael york who says that biggie still doesn't feel like a legit wwe champion and even Elias Roy says that Biggie is being overhyped that he's carrying Raw, and I can't take him serious one bit. And honestly, guys, this kind of sucks to see all this happen because Damn. everybody wanted Biggie to become the WWE this Champion one day. Everyone was ecstatic when he won the Money in the Bank and said that was a right decision. And now that he is finally the WWE Champion, there are people that are hating on him. And there's a good amount of people. Like, I've not seen many people hate Bobby Lashley or Roman Reigns. This is something that's happening to Biggie, I guess, because he has why he more of a like goofy that. personality. Definitely don't know why he's sitting like that on this interview. This is a little, a little bit wild, my guy. <laughs> Close some legs, man. What are you doing, bro? But that doesn't take away from the fact that the man is doing a great job as the WWE Champion. I think he is the perfect face right now. And if you just take a look at his weekend, the man was at a football game for Fox. Then he went mm -hmm. to the, the Wilder and Tyson Fury fight. And he even was a part of the introduction for that boxing fight. He is all over the place. Yeah, no, I, that that was a cool highlight for me to see Big E, the WWE champion there, pretty much setting up their fight, like being part of the little promo intro for each boxer, man. Um, guy is doing his thing. Um, I, I think what people are having the issue with, and I can somewhat agree, is his playful nature. He still has that playful vibe like he did in the new day but i think what needs to happen is he needs to go against a good heel that can bring out that seriousness you guys saw the seriousness he had when he was feuding with uh what's his name for the intercontinental championship uh apollo cruz when he was feuding with apollo or whatnot apollo turned heel and he was bringing out that that aggressive side in biggie that you could get behind I think that's the only thing Big E can work on. Being more aggressive. Like, I know he's playful and stuff, but I need him to be more aggressive, more serious. Like, he needs to have that more serious vibe. Like, Bobby Lashley wasn't really all about jokes. Even when Drew was the champion, when he was, uh, you know, fresh off his championship win against Brock Lesnar, he wasn't about joking. He was about kicking your ass, and I think people like that, even his run to get the championship. So I think that's the one thing Big E could possibly work on. Being more serious, obviously they need to put a, fee, uh, uh, a heel with him. Him going against Drew is cool, but they really need to put a, a good heel to go against him to bring out that aggressive side that we want to see. So I think that could be the issue. He's taking his WWE Championship and he looks cool with it and he's doing all his promotional work. I think he's a great champion. I think a lot of people are just, you know, complaining just to complain. This is what we usually get. We get WWE fans who act fickle. They wanted Biggie to win the title and now they don't. And that's just how it is, unfortunately. My top 10 reel says that the WWE is actually gaining viewers that they lost in the last two years. 
Think you're a good driver? Now's your chance to prove it with Karma Drive, and you could save years just slowly and i disagree with this i don't think they're attracting that audience back i believe that nah. the wwe is in fact gaining new viewers that aren't the same audience i think it's more of a younger generation yeah of they're not they're not gaining back the audience that they used to have in in little bits i think aew is gaining the the older audience the audience that grew up with me in the attitude era i think they're gaining them back a little bit but i can't see a lot of fans outside of maybe checking out Roman Reigns and SmackDown, maybe. But I don't see just uh, droves of old school wrestling fans coming back to the product. Of kids who are now getting into the WWE because it's a little edgier now. It's a little cooler than what it was in the beginning of the PG era. And I think they're getting a lot of new teenagers watching the program. That's just what I think. I don't think people are coming back who used to watch the Ruthless Aggression or the Attitude Era. No, they're definitely not coming back. Those people are definitely watching AEW. Yeah. But these new guys coming back and the WWE ratings going up, those are new fans. Woomy Angel says that Edge versus Seth Rollins is the best feud of the year so far, and this is 100% correct. I Edge versus Seth Rollins is great. That is such a fantastic feud so far, man. Uh, I am loving it, and it's going to culminate at Hell in a Cell. I say this all the time. It should be my, my catchphrase. Sign me up because I, I'm, I can't wait to see that. This is one of the better feuds of this year. Out, and it's crazy because this feud is outside of the Roman Reigns feud. It's actually it kind of spawned from Edge and Roman. It spawned from their feud, and now we're into something else that's just as good, man. I, I love it. I think Edge and Seth Rollins have done a fantastic job at making their feud feel like an actual feud where two people hate each other. They've done a really good job. Their yes. matches have been on fire. Seth Rollins versus Edge at MSG was amazing. And their match at SummerSlam was also amazing. And I cannot wait. I'm telling I'm gonna be honest with you. That Seth Rollins versus Edge match, even though the John Cena match versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam was fantastic. I enjoyed that match. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like the Edge versus versus Seth Rollins match just a little bit more. That was just a fantastic match. That was easily one of my favorite matches of SummerSlam. Not even gonna lie. I'm telling you, I can't wait until we get this Hell in a Cell match. It is gonna be awesome. I'm Cosmic says, as much as I enjoy the story with his dad, Dominic isn't ready for the main roster. And I used to say this, but I think he is more ready now than he was before. Yeah. And I'm completely fine with him being in a tag team. Like I thought him versus Seth Rollins was a bad idea because that's a main roster player. And you don't put Dominic Mysterio, who was 23 years old, who didn't have experience that much at the time against a top star. But him in the tag team division is completely fine. Mm -hmm. Dominic says that at WrestleMania 38, if The Rock isn't available, the main event should be either a trouble threat between Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Drew McIntyre, or a fatal four-way with Bobby joining them. That is not a bad idea. I don't think Bobby Lashley is going to join them. Just it's not a bad idea, but the only problem here that I would have, obviously, is how do you get Brock back into that match that makes sense if The Rock is not available? And to be honest, does it really make sense? Depending on how they book Crown Jewel, does it really make sense for Brock to be able to have a title opportunity again against Roman if he loses to him at Crown Jewel? Especially if he loses to him clean. Now, if Roman cheats, which I hope he doesn't, I actually want him to beat him clean. If Roman cheats for whatever reason, maybe they can set that up. That gives them an out, but I think you have Roman go over Brock clean. And if you guys want me to make a video really, you know, detailing how I think the Brock versus Roman uh, Reigns match should go at Crown Jewel, let me know. I will actually make that video for you guys this week if you guys would be interested in that. Just because I feel like, you know, it doesn't really make too much sense. He's on Raw. But Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Drew McIntyre would be a banger triple threat match. And I would not be opposed to it. Gavin does everything. I, I can tell where he got his name from. Says that Seth Rollins is the best in WWE. And he is better than the Tribal Chief. 
the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And that's kind of crazy. Like, I love Seth Rollins. He is definitely a top five wrestler in the WWE. His, uh, but he's not better sentiments. than Roman, in my opinion. No. Roman Reigns is too good. He's at a god level. He is the number one wrestler in the world right now. And nobody is taking that away. Yeah, Roman, he's god tier right now. As a wrestler, he's definitely god tier. It is crazy. You have two of the best, like, two of the best wrestlers in Roman Reigns and Kenny Omega, both of them heels. Both of them heels doing some of the best work. I love it, man. Both of them cool heels. They're not even like just heels or like, oh, damn, you know what I'm saying? You're evil. I don't like you. They're like, you know what? You're a prick, but you're cool. I, you're cool, bro. You're cool. Like, I, I can't get mad if for cheering you because you're so fucking cool, but at the same time, you're an asshole. Like, that, that's... That's the time we're in right now, where heels are, they're kind of in, to be honest with you. Heels are in right now. Wait <laughs> for him anytime soon. Vermont Wrestling Fan says that Bray Wyatt would be wise enough to sign with Impact Wrestling for now because AEW's roster is too stacked at the moment. No, I disagree. There's uh -uh, no reason no. why Bray Wyatt should be wrestling in front of 50 people no. and in front of like, I don't know, 100,000 viewers on Twitch. That just doesn't seem right to me. No. Bray Wyatt is much more important. I'd rather see him in AEW with limited times of him being there than him being on Impact Wrestling every week. Facts. Do not put him. I don't want him to go to Impact. He deserves much better than that. I would love to see him in AEW and kind of to agree to uh, his point, have him in limited capacity. I would love to see the Fiend gimmick in AEW because I think they would do it right and have it in limited capacity. He's there, but not really there. Like, he's, you know what I'm saying? Make it make sense. You don't want to oversaturate it. They do have a lot of stars, so you don't want to oversaturate it. But at the same time, if he's going to use the Fiend gimmick there or a new variant, like variation of it, I think they definitely should... Make it special. Make it mean something when he pulls out the Fiend character. So, I don't know where he's going to go, but I would love to see him in AEW. I think they would do him justice. Philomath says that Braun Strowman was better than Omos, General Aziz, and... Sam here is anxious. He won't be approved for that new credit card. So, he's procrastinating. Like, really even the big show when it comes to wrestling and i gotta agree braun Strowman is definitely way better than omas and general aziz yeah i don't know about big show because yeah. you know at the end of the day big show is a legend he is someone i grew up watching like well's the big show you know what i'm saying what like i that, can't bro? disrespect the big show the like that, that so guy. i will not but we're gonna talk about omas and general aziz i don't know why braun Strowman was released thinking that these two other guys who weren't really ready for the wwe would take his place i would hire him back if i was vince mcmahon it doesn't make much sense he wants to work for the company again just bring him back get rid of omas and general aziz if you want i don't care braun Strowman was the real big man yeah yeah um i know he he's he's not i don't i wouldn't consider him better than the big show because of you know we all remember how the big show was back in the day and just he was the true big man that you you definitely didn't want to mess with but at the same time uh at the same time, I'm gonna be honest with you. Him going to back to WWE could work, but only if they booked him correctly. I don't want him to come back just to be booked horribly. So I don't know. I'm I'm kind of indifferent. I don't want to say just go to AEW just because, but if he wants to work in WWE, they have to book him right. They gotta make it make him seem legitimate. Because Braun Strowman. For someone as big as he was, he just, he would lose the matches he needed to win to solidify himself. You know what I'm saying? Or they would give him a token championship. At one point, I believe he won the Universal Championship from, I want to say it was from Goldberg at some point. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But we all know that was because Roman didn't want to be there for, um... Uh, because of COVID, he didn't want to put himself at risk because of COVID and, you know, the family he has or whatnot. So he kind of stepped away from WWE for a bit. So it was like a token championship, in my opinion. So they're going to bring him back. He needs to be used correctly. That's my only thing. 
This guy says that Omega versus Brian was very good, but the marks have made it way too overrated. And no, that's wrong. Whoa. I was there live watching it in attendance and everybody was standing on their feet. The fire in that building was no, insane. I've not never overrated. been in that kind of atmosphere One of the best in matches. so long. Like I can't even remember the last great. time. Maybe the Raw after WrestleMania 29. That is the last time that a crowd was that electric for a show. And the fact that Omega and Brian brought that back was really awesome. Was, I'm telling you, we were watching dope. it on our feet for 30 whole minutes. You don't get that too often in wrestling. Big Garf says that The Fiend was always just okay. And no, I disagree. Oh. I think The Fiend was always awesome. He did go on the decline a little bit in his last year with the whole Randy Orton and Alexa Bliss thing. I'm not yeah, going to lie. That, that was, was kind of ass. But besides that, that, The Fiend was a fire. Charisma says that LA Knight is the best promo in the WWE and should become a star on the main roster. The WWE made a mistake not drafting him last week. And yeah, I agree with you 100 I don't know too much about him. I've seen him a few times in NXT, but I haven't watched NXT in a while. So, that's a thing too. Percent. LA Knight has got all the tools to be such a super... And then once again, NXT stars... As soon as they get to the main roster, they completely change them. So they don't even have the same flair and luster and, and creative vibes that they had in NXT when they go to the main roster. So he can have all the charisma and be great on the promo. Don't matter if they don't book you, right? You can be a great promo, but if you don't ever win matches that you need to win, who's going to care? No. Star in the WWE, and he's so much better than so many other people on the roster. I would put him on Raw or SmackDown immediately, to be honest. Immediately, right now. Icon Killer says that WWE should bring War Games to the main roster and have the Bloodline versus Hurt Business versus New Day at Survivor Series. And all I gotta say is yes, yes, that would yes, be cool. yes, please. That would be yes, cool. Please. I'd be down. Killer Cam says that Hangman Adam Page has had the best long-term story in a long time, and you gotta get credit where it's due. AEW has done a fantastic. I hadn't really been paying too much to uh his storyline so y'all gonna have to fill me in on it that's job with hangman adam page and when he wins that world championship it is gonna be amazing to watch it i can't wait panda penguin says xavier woods should be the member of the new day to turn heel they've run their course in my eyes and seen as he's the only one who hasn't won a world title it feels fitting for woods to do so and i disagree i don't think these guys should ever turn heel or i don't think they should break up at this point they should just do their own thing you have kofi and xavier on smackdown i wish that they stayed on raw and the new day were still together but you know they're doing their own thing on smackdown think he's doing his thing on raw but i think if xavier woods ever wins a world title i want to see him win it with Kofi and Biggie by his side. I did make a video about this uh, when uh, Biggie did win the championship, and I was saying maybe Xavier could turn heel. And I, 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 I don't think I would have a problem with it. I get why people are like, no, they shouldn't turn him heel because they need to be together, and I get that. But I do feel like that's just a good story to tell. The guy that's been beside his brothers for all this time and he's never gotten a championship would feel somewhat jealous a little bit. That's a good story. Me personally. Comment down below let me know if you guys would be interested in Xavier, in the NA Xavier heel turn. I actually would. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that would be some, that would be a nice new story that we wouldn't see coming. Dante says that Stone Cold versus Bret Hart does not get enough appreciation. Who? What are you talking about, bro? Who? Who? Who don't think they don't get enough appreciation? What are you talking? That Matt? What? Well, everybody says it's one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. What? Come on. Eduardo the 39 says Sami Zayn should be king of the ring. That would not be a terrible choice. That would be if you good. Think about it. Sami Zayn would do a fantastic and hilarious job as the king of the ring, but unfortunately, he will not be going to Saudi Arabia, so that is just impossible. Morgan Crunch says Omos can be the next Andre the Giant, and there's no way Andre the Giant is literally a legend, an icon. He's one of the goats of professional wrestling. Yeah. He changed the game. He is someone that everyone knows. There's no way Omos can ever be the next Andre the Giant. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. 
NH says that Crown Jewel this year is great. I'm talking about the card, not the location. And yes, Crown Jewel actually looks like a really good card. And it's probably due to the fact that the WWE isn't just using a bunch of old people like John Cena, Triple H, and whatnot to build the show. It's actually being built around the show that we're watching on a weekly basis with all the young superstars. So they've done a good job. I'm not going to lie. That's, that, that's, this will probably be the most excited I've been for a Crown Jewel pay-per-view. Being dead ass. Being dead ass because they, to his point, they've been using wrestlers that be on the shows, not these part timers that we haven't seen outside of Brock, but not like people we haven't seen in decades. You know what I'm saying? They're using mostly the current roster to build up the show. Looking forward to it. Surprise. That random Jacob says Sammy Guevara should not have been the one to defeat Miro for the TNT title. And I disagree with you, Jacob, because honestly, it was a good choice. Sammy Guevara has been with the company for so long now. This is true. And this was just the right. And he's a Houston native, man. So shout out to him winning that. That was pretty cool. Moments, in my opinion. And Colin18 says that they should end the brand split. And looking at the roster, I am not against this idea. I want to get more in depth into this later on in a different video. But the brand split ending might not be a bad thing. It might help the ratings, if anything. And it might also make fans want to watch Raw and SmackDown. They just have to do it the right way. Like I said, I will talk about that later in a different video. Anyway, that is it for this. Well, when it comes to the brand split, their roster is huge. So... They kind of have to, I see, I, I get it. They can do kind of like what AEW does. AEW has two separate shows, Rampage on Fridays, Dynamite on uh, Wednesdays. But it's all still under one umbrella. There's still one champion, one world champion. There's still one tag team champions. There's still one uh, women's champion. There's still one TNT champion. That makes since so if they did it like that where it's just like i don't know what they would call it obviously these are flagship shows so they've been on episodic shows for <laughs> a long time so i doubt they'll ever do it but if they was to do it they could keep it monday night raw friday night smackdown but just have the championships be like maybe one championship and kind of float it but once again the roster is huge, so they would have to really do some restructuring, but I doubt that they do that anytime soon. But it would be cool. I do believe they need to combine divisions. That's the only thing. If they were to do something like that, combine divisions, combine the tag team divisions, combine the women's divisions because you don't have enough. So combine those two divisions. You can have the men divisions be separated. Universal Championship, WWE Championship, because you have plenty of those. But combine the tag teams. Combine the women's division. I think you can work with that, in my opinion. But comment down below. Let me know, man. Do you agree with some of these hot takes that was presented to us in this video? Do you disagree? What are your hot takes you have for WWE right now in AEW? Comment down below. Let me know. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.